In this video, I want to discuss something which we don't usually talk a lot about. That is how do you stay consistent as a developer and avoid procrastinating a lot of things all the time. The worst case scenario of that is you leave programming at all. So let me just walk you through a few things which I have figured out along the way when I was learning to code. And I have also learned from the community or observing a lot of other people over the last few years. Let's discuss a few important pointers on that. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So before we actually get into the solution, let's define the problem clearly. What is going wrong when you're trying to learn? Now, again, I don't want to get into the debate of free versus paid, interactive versus non-interactive stuff. That is all secondary. What we're going to focus on whether you're learning as a developer or whether you're just getting started, you might be facing some roadblocks, some bottlenecks, whether that's in terms of motivation, whether that's in terms of actual, you know, lack of content or lack of technical understanding, whether that's some sort of frustration or, you know, you're just stuck. You don't know what to do or what to do next or if this carrier or if programming is something you want to even do at all as well. So my number one suggestion to people who actually lose a little bit of confidence or actually think that you know this is not working out or why you're doing this having these sort of questions is in a lot of cases you have to go back to your why I mean why are you even doing programming as a job as a carrier for some of you or for I think most of you this would have a financial reason you might want to get a good job you might want to get a good salary hike you want to have a promotion or something that is completely fair those are good reasons and you should not be you know kind of think in a way that those are not fair reasons but if you can directly or indirectly take your why somehow to fun if you are having fun while learning to code or not exactly learning, but just building something, right? Because at the end of the day, programming is just building stuff, right? Whether that's back end, front end, all the industry level skill sets. But if you can narrow it down, okay, it pays my bills, but it, it is fun when I crash production, something like that. Or it pays my bills, but I like to discover new technology, whether that's AR, VR, and then I like to program, or maybe I like to learn Swift so that I can build, use my iPad, and I can build a solar system game in AR for my friends, which would be fun. Something like that, right? So you have to figure out if programming is fun for you or not. If it is not, then also obviously a lot of programmers exist who don't like their job, but they're doing it. So that's completely fine. That's your call. That's something you have to discover. But if you are able to narrow it down to fun, I mean, that's that's really the cheat code of learning to code and becoming a great developer. Because most developers I have encountered who are really good usually would do a lot of stuff which does not have a very high ROI of their time as well, just because they are having fun. Okay, so once you discover your why and you're able to link it somehow with fun, whether that's app building, whether that's doing something else, the next thing is you have to figure out if your tech stack, whatever you are learning right now, somehow relates to that fun activity, right? For example, if you are interested in AR, VR, or if you're interested in games, let's say, you play a lot of games and you are interested into game programming. You want to build your own platformer game or something and you are learning about DSA or CP. That is not going to get you a lot far, right? I mean, you might be able to learn a few things because you are afraid of placements and you might be able to do that. But that's that's all you're going to be doing. If you want to become a good developer, you have to start at least this is like one man's point of view. So take it with a grain of salt, but you have to start or somehow link it with games in this example, right? So if I were you, I would actually, and if I was not a programmer, I would actually start and take a look at what can I learn, build my very first game, right? What programming language should I need to learn, whether that's C Sharp or whether that's, you know, C Sharp plus Unity, something like that. So these sort of tools, I would figure out that, hey, I need to learn about them. I need to create a small platformer game where let's say just a character keeps on jumping to upper levels, something like that, I mean, you would figure out that. But the idea is that when you're trying to learn to build these games, you're gonna learn a lot more about programming in general as well. I mean, like I said in my last video, how to learn everything, you don't necessarily start from scratch every single time. You just learn programming from scratch 
only one time, right? And if you pick up that one time with the thing where you are having a lot of fun, that would clear a lot of hurdles for you. Because at the end of the day, even if you don't make a career in game programming, even if you try to crack Facebook or Amazon or any, any sort of fan company, you're going to realize that a lot of learnings which you had in games maybe like some memory optimization, some data structures, how to work with programs in general can also be carried into your field of work over those companies, right? So this could be even your side hobby. Meanwhile, you're working into a completely different job. You start programming like this and then you maybe figure out once you are comfortable with writing simple softwares and even moderately complex softwares, then you move on to what else you need to make a career out of it. But the first thing I guess is to actually pick up something which seems fun to you. The next important point which I have is that you have to have to realize that it takes time and you have to internalize this as soon as you can that it will take time and it will take actually infinite time to get the best at anything because all things are evolving feasible it's not really feasible but it will take you a long 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 time to get really 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 good at it but the fun part is you don't have to be really 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 good at it to get a job or to build a billion dollar company or build a simple app or something you don't have to be really good at it it's just a fact out there but you have to realize that if you're here which is like zero and if you want to get to 50 you might do it in the span of two months, but if you want to get to 90, this might take you two years, right? It's, it's just like how you charge your phone's battery these days, right? The battery actually goes really quick to, a, you know, a 50 or a 60% and then it actually slows down because then it needs time to actually build up the full charge. Similar thing exists in your journey, would exist in your journey as a developer as well, because once you approach this 90, 95 mark of a great programmer, this guy is like a great programmer, right? There are a lot little things. I mean, not a not lot more because you have already covered a lot more things here. This area is basically experience plus little things plus your observation skills, plus your debugging skills and so on and so forth, right? So it's fine to not be in this area, but you have to be understanding enough that two months or three months would only get you so far, right? People who you see who are building something from scratch, from ground up, Remix framework, these guys who actually, I mean, these are like super geniuses people who build complete frameworks and libraries and tooling and stuff like this. These guys have been working for decades, right? These guys have been there since 1990s and since the starting of web and so on. So you have to realize that if you want to get at that level, sure, it might take you a little less time, but it still takes you time to get really good. But even for getting moderately good, you have to be willing to give up at least a few months. Give up as in, you have to be able to understand that it will take some time. All right, so we have the fun part covered. We have the time part covered, which, which are like two very, very important things. And the third part, which is probably the most important thing, I mean, in all of them, but also these two important things enable that, and that is consistency over time. I mean, time wouldn't matter a lot if you just scored once a week right and how do you get consistent you get consistent if you're having fun right you don't get consistent because of fear you might get consistent for a few months maybe four months three months but then once you get that job or you know uh, maybe a slightly lower side of job as well or maybe you get a little bit comfortable that hey i'm fine with where i am right now you're just gonna give up right you just because you're not having fun there there is no way it does not make sense to learn programming if you're not having fun and there is no potential upside, right? Because it's mostly like a lot of learning in, in the months and then something happens, right? Then this is the point where maybe you get a job or, you know, you build something which takes off and something happens, right? So any person who's going through the struggle part can only go through that when they have some sort of unfair advantage that they are able to balance this with the fun they are having. I mean, this graph does not make a lot of sense, but I, I believe you get the idea. So how do you stay consistent? Well, it's tough for me to answer this. It depends on person to person. Some people stay consistent very much if they're part of community. Like we have a Discord server, you can join that. We host something like 50 days of JavaScript. That is a challenge which is going on on Twitter and CodeDamn. You can code one problem a day in JavaScript. That is also like one way to stay consistent. You can create a weekly calendar of your own you can do all sorts of this stuff but some people can just stay consistent by themselves as well and the best part is like taking up a fun project 
like a game. Maybe you are building a platformer game like Mario and you want to finish it. And oftentimes you will see that when you start these little fun little projects yourself, you would wake up, you would think about that pretty much like a lot of time. You would be trying to see a window of opportunity when you can work on that, when you can build the next feature. And I mean, if you get into, into that particular zone, I think that that's like the best learning zone possible right and you don't know what to do you're excited about what needs to be done and you know you have a rough vague idea of how it could be done then you are googling then you are learning on stack overflow github you're downloading packages you're understanding the nuances of how to work with multiple files editors downloading assets doing all sorts of stuff right so it's, it's a fun it's a fun part to be so yeah i mean picking up a project is also a great way to be consistent and maybe like giving yourself a soft deadline right don't go too hard on yourself i want to complete this in a week especially if you are somebody who has not even learned anything yet but give yourself soft deadlines stay consistent have fun be part of communities but yeah man i guess this this part is like super important and this part is super important <laughs> and i mean this part these three pointers which we discussed are really really important to stay consistent to beat procrastination and to become a better developer over time. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you were able to take away some of the learnings from this one. My personal experience has been a mix of all these three. I mean, I gave myself a lot of time. I started very early when I was a student in school. So obviously I had a lot of time, which I could, you know, exchange for a little bit of less consistency. I wouldn't say like I have coded every single day since class eight or seven, but yeah, I mean, mostly I've been thinking about working with code pretty much every single day for the last six, seven years, I think. Of course, there would be days when I'm not doing that, but it's not like I have been not in touch for weeks. That has like, I don't, I don't think that has ever happened, that I have not been in touch with weeks with programming. So having consistent approach to learning is super important. And I was only able to do that because I used to pick a lot of fun projects, whether that's building games on native platforms or building websites or just building some cracked softwares and you know, things which get you a cease and desist letter from WhatsApp, if you know, you know, and um, basically like doing anything which seems fun to you, whether that's in the space of web, mobile, hacking, anything, right? But having this part is like super important in your journey. So, yep, that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it and understood something and were, were able to get some help from this, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Send it to a few friends who are confused how they stay, how they can stay consistent. And let me know in the comments what you think. That is all for this one. I'm going to see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of Codedamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.